good morning and welcome on this first snowy Sunday of the winter. Are there any announcements to be shared? A couple about this evening. Um, choir, choir will rehearse at 6.30. Patrick Gagnon and his wife Jody will be uh, doing a prelude about 6.45 with the program beginning at 7. Yes. Some time back I was looking and asking if anybody had a copy of the video of Monday Morning Breakfast when WHO was up there. And someone left this CD. It has part of the breakfast, but it's a lot about Honey Creek in my mailbox, I think. So I don't know whose it was. If somebody wants it back, I, I've certainly, I'm done with that project, so this is available. Did, Mary, did you? Okay, anyway, I have it, and I'm more than glad to give it back, or otherwise I'll give it to Honey Creek. But. Any other announcements? If not, would you stand and greet those around you? sing together hymn number 154 we bow down a little praise chorus you are lord of creation and lord of my life lord of the land and the sea you were lord of the heavens before there was time and lord of all lords you will be we bow down and we worship you lord we bow down and we worship you lord we bow down and we worship you lord lord of all lords you will be you are king of creation and king of my life king of the land and the sea you were king of the heavens before there was time and king of all kings you will be we bow down and we crown you the king we bow down and we crown you the king we bow down and we crown you the king king of all kings you will be thank you you may be seated if you'd like to follow along with jeff you can either look at the screen or follow in your bibles isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. nevertheless whoop. 
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning and will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From the time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Will you bow with me? Heavenly Father, give us a sense of worship, a sense of awe at the birth of Christ that we celebrate this day and tomorrow Mm. and every day. Amen. Let's rise up and sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, followed by O Little Town of Bethlehem. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Christ my highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb veiled in flesh the godhead see hail the incarnate deity pleased as man with men to dwell jesus our emmanuel hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all He brings. Risen with healing in His wings. Mild He lays His glory by. Born to men, may nor may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. And then we'll sing... Little town of Bethlehem, which is 250 in your hymn books. Dark street shineth 
the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Lady, second verse. seated. That's a beautiful scene to Christ. Would you come forward? Yeah. We'll give our morning offering. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you for the gifts that we have to share. And bless those that they may be used in ways that honor and glorify you. Amen.
you, Andrea. Let's uh, rise together and sing our response to God's goodness. Let's worship and adore Him. Hymn 247. are a little bit old, der. <laughs> but uh, we've been going through the Advent season, the four weeks leading up to Christmas, which is tomorrow, of course, today's Christmas Eve, so it's the fourth week. And do you know what four words, the, the first three words we have looked at so far? Hope, over there at that manger seen by Jeff's... Joy. Joy. Love. Love. Remember, it's over there. And then last week was joy. And you have to find joy. You have to find joy. <laughs> so you may have to rise up and find joy. I'm going to tell you something. It's in front of this pew, these two pews. It's this way. So see if you can find joy. That, that, that goes for the rest of you, too. <laughs> Joy. Where do you think you might find joy? Here? Tommy? Where do we find joy? Who gives us joy? Over here. There you go. There you go. Joy is where Jesus is, right there in that manger. Very good. Well, today, our fourth word is a word... Well, here, you guys make a word out of that. Put it on the floor and make a word. Peace. What's the word? Peace. That's right, peace. This fourth Sunday of Advent is peace. Can you hand me those letters? Yep. Thank you. Can you tell me about these? Mm, quiet, calm, 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 peace, quiet. quiet. Can you think of some other words? Quiet stillness. Maybe a peace that means there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear here. What's that? Nothing to fear with Nothing to fear but what? Fear itself. Nothing to fear but fear itself. So. Barney Fife said that. <laughs> okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, there was someone else who said it that might have been a little more important historically, and that was Winston Churchill. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. That's right. Now, Jesus gives us a sense of peace. Now, we think of peace as calmness and stillness and nothing to fear. 
That's the peace that God gives us through Jesus. Now the world wants to give us peace by ending wars. They make peace by having battles and wars and killing other people. And we have wars with other people too, don't we? Sometimes it's at school, sometimes we have battles with our parents, with friends, or people who are not our friends. But Jesus and the gospel calls us to the gospel of peace, where we reconcile, where we understand at least as much as we can, and we decide to get along and love each other and accept each other. Even though we may not agree about everything, we accept each other and treat each other with mutual dignity and respect. Peace. That's, uh, that's what God is looking for. And this word in Hebrew is shalom. And the Greek word is irene. And what it means is it's just not the lack of violence. It means that everything is good. You have enough food to eat. You have shelter. You're loved. Your relationships are healthy. So when we talk about peace biblically, it means everything is right. Everything is good. And we know that in this world, not everything is good, is it? There's people who are hungry, starving to death, people who are sick, who cannot get help medically. There's wars, there's violence, there's misunderstandings. But God, this is God's dream. And whenever we help people, whenever we feed people, help people have clothing, build shelters, houses, Whenever we help our neighbor, we are participating in the peace that God wants for the world. And that's pretty awesome. We are called to be not peacekeepers, but peacemakers. Big difference. Peacemakers. So I want you to remember that this season. Tommy, I'd like you to light four candles. I'd like you to light the three purple ones first, and actually the two purples, and then this pink for joy, and then this one for peace. So you got to push forward and keep keep pushing down. There you go. You got to push forward and hold it, and just you got to keep a thumb on that and put pressure on it. There you go. Sometimes it takes a little while. There you go, brother. That's fine. Just go ahead. This one too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good, Tommy. Just lay it down beside there on the table. Yeah. So let's let's say our four our four four godly virtues. Hope, hope. Joy. joy, love, love. hope, love, joy, peace. peace. All right? And then tonight, Dick and Jane will light all of them because tonight we light the Christ candle for Christmas, Christmas Eve and celebrating the, the coming of Jesus, okay? All right? Let's, uh, let's pray together, Matthew. Let's stand up and pray. Is there anybody you'd like to pray for today? Um. Not particularly. Okay. Well, why don't we pray for peace? Mm -hmm. Peace in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus has made peace with, for us on the cross. Mm -hmm. By the spilling of his blood and the forgiveness of our sins and our brokenness. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we're at peace with God. And let's pray that that peace goes this way. Mm -hmm. And other people. Mm -hmm. That we're peaceful people. All right? Mm -hmm. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time of year. I thank you for Tommy and Matthew in particular this morning. Bless their lives. May they always know down deep that they're loved. They're loved by their parents. They're loved by you. And that is all that really matters in the end, is that we're loved. Give us a sense of peace in our hearts that we might be peacemakers, the makers of peace. And we thank you for Jesus, who's the Prince of Peace. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jeff has a special basket today that has been offered by Brenda Crabb. And today, boys, you can have three pieces of candy each.
I'll be reading the story of the birth of Jesus from Luke 2, beginning with the first verse. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quinarius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who he was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in the cloth and placed him in the manger, because there was no room for, room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who is lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard of it were amazed and at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things up in her heart and pondered them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name of the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer It's the most wonderful time of the year Christmas is one of the most wonderful times of the year There's excitement We laugh a little easier smile a little longer and this year in particular I have found more joy skipping around in my heart than previous Christmases and there's all the preparations that go into Christmas we the church and the church around the world has been preparing for Christmas for the last four weeks as we celebrate Advent the culture well the culture has been preparing for Christmas for four months when you go to the big retail stores like Walmart and Target and even Menards, you see the Christmas displays out, the trees, the lights and everything, and you know that Halloween is right around the corner. <laughs> and we can make Christmas pretty complex and filled with stress and deadlines and parties to attend, gifts to purchase and wrap and on and on and on. But the Christmas message itself is really pretty simple. God visited our planet, wrapping himself up in flesh, and took on the form of a human to show us just how much God loves us. That's pretty much it. 
When God surveyed humanity and realized how dark and difficult our days could be, how confused we get about our identity and our place, how many painful things that we do to each other, out of that confusion and insecurity, God decided to do something about it. And so after giving us the law through the prophets, God got personally involved. Personally, intimately, God became involved with the fallen creation, including us. He visited the planet in a completely unique, once and for all, unrepeatable way through Jesus. But notice with me, please, when God decided to get personally involved, God didn't come to punish, He didn't come to frighten, He didn't come to scold us or to threaten us. God, when God wrapped Himself up in flesh, didn't come to annihilate, didn't come to destroy, didn't come to purge the world of sinners or many of the other things that people attribute to God and even many in the church. Instead, God came. And Christ comes to tell us that we are loved deeply, truly, and forever. The prophet Jeremiah, in his relationship with God in the Old Testament, writes these words about God speaking for God. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Moreover, God Himself has fulfilled God's own vision for a redeemed world. For in the coming of Jesus, all the hopes and dreams of God's people are fulfilled in the person Christ. God doesn't say no to the world, but gives us the stamp of approval through Christ, who is the affirmation of God's dreams and desires. The Apostle Paul wrote of this so beautifully in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through Him the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. All the dreams, all the visions, all the understandings that we find in Isaiah and Jeremiah and the minor prophets find their yes in Christ to us. And God drives the point home about His everlasting love to all people by first revealing that Jesus has come to people who weren't particularly important. For that matter, were not particularly loved. An unwed teenage mother, no account shepherds who were at the bottom of the socioeconomic scale, and everyone looked down on shepherds. Foreign astrologers practicing a whole different religion. All of this shows that God wasn't going to leave anyone behind, that God's message of love is for all, as in everyone whether the world thought you were important or lovable or not, God's love is offered to every human being. And that is good news. And that's still the way it is. God loves all of us. But especially once those who don't feel loved or lovable, those who regularly feel like they're on the outside looking in, those who feel forgotten, the invisible, the homeless, and those who wonder what the point of life is, to hear the good news of great joy, that God loves, accepts, cherishes, values everyone. And that is the way it is. And when we take that information and process that through our minds and hopefully gets down into our hearts, it brings about not just joy. I love the Greek word for great. Mega. Mega joy. 
The core of the Christian message is simple because after all the shopping and cleaning and cooking and preparing, and for that matter, and we sometimes forget this side of things in Christmas, after trying to make the ends meet financially, keeping a distraught family intact, struggling to get a job, or worrying about a loved one's health or our own health, or someone overseas in the armed services, after all that stuff, that can kind of make us feel crazy. And it's crucial that we understand that we have infinite value. We do not have infinite value because of who we are. We only have infinite value because God loves us. Only because of that. The Christmas, me the Christmas message is indeed simple. Because long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth That is the message of Christmas. The peaceful word that maybe we need to hear on this Christmas Eve. And to simplify it even further, we can reduce the Christmas message, underscoring two words that the angels say to the shepherds that capture the heart of the Christian message for you. For you. Look at what the angels say in verses 10, 11, and 12. Be not afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you born this day, for to you born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a stone feeding trough, a manger. Notice it's not just that Jesus is born, but the angel says, Jesus is born for you. For you. And though the gospel is never a private word, it is nevertheless a personal word. Reminding each and every one of us that God believes that you are worthy of honor, of dignity, and above all else, love. This is the God who addresses us personally. Mary. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? A God who speaks to us. But it's also not just personal, and it's just not private. Because remember what the angels say. I bring you good news of great joy which will come to all people. Oh yes, it's personal. But it can't be private. This love, this everlasting love that comes to us wrapped in the gift of human flesh carries us from the cradle to the grave and then beyond the grave. I know a sweet young person who a few years ago was working with Alzheimer's patients and one of the patients that she was attending to could not complete sentences. But this young person had the tender heart and the thoughtfulness to sing this. Jesus loves me, this I know. And the Alzheimer's patient began singing and sang every word. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Karl Barth, the writer of evangelical theology, 
the German scholar was asked on a bus to surmise his theology. Now, if you know anything about Karl Barth, his primary text of writing evangelical theology comes right out of the Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 20. All the promises of God find their yes in Christ. Mr. Bart, give me the summation of your evangelical theology. This is what he said on this bus. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. This gift wrapped up in flesh is offered to you. It's a gift that no other deity has ever offered humanity. No other God or the gods has offered a baby wrapped up in flesh. And this innocent baby will grow into God's greatest prophet, teacher, and deliverer, becoming our redeemer. He will grow up fulfilling God's vision of peace by going to a Roman gibbet and speaking with a human voice the words of God, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And this gift has to be opened and received and accepted. And that's why the choir sang, Glory to God in a Chelsea's Deo. Glory to God in the highest. That's exactly the word in Greek here. Glory to God in the highest. Hippostastos. It means glory to God who's the most elevated. Glory to God, who is the loftiest, who deserves our praise and adoration and our obedience. Why? Because this God came down and pitched his tent among us, walked among us, taught us, died because of us, was raised for us, and has broadcasted his life-giving spirit among us as our Emmanuel, our with us God. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The spirit is blowing and hearts will be glowing when Jesus comes near. It's the most wonderful time. It's the most wonderful time. It's the most wonderful time of the year.
Any prayer requests or praises or thanksgiving we'd like to share before we launch back out into the world? Gary? Gary, hang on just a moment. Let Denny get to you with the mic. I'd like to have us pray for somebody that's a very dear friend of mine. Last Tuesday, she was in surgery for seven hours. Two teams of surgeons working with her in Iowa City. And I was told she may come home either today or tomorrow. Her name is Barbellis. Her and I worked together transporting students for the school. And we change off once in a while. But she's been a real dear friend of mine. And I just, I just pray that she'll be healed now. We join you in that prayer, Gary, that Barbara be healed as quickly and as fully as possible. Any other words or prayer requests? I'd like us to hold Lou and Judy and their family in prayer. Their daughter Heidi is in the middle of a battle with cancer and she will have surgery, I think she goes to Mayo on the 26th and surgery is the 27th. Lou and Judy will be spending most of January helping Doug and Heidi and their girls and uh, you all have helped someone in that way. You know the, how draining that can be. So I'd like to lift the whole family and lift Jason because he will notice that difference that his parents aren't close by. But thank goodness for the phones, he can talk to them anytime he needs to. So uh, I would ask for prayers for Lou and Judy. Why don't you just go ahead and lead us in prayer, Marlene? Okay. Heavenly Father, I ask for prayer. I ask for your peace and your joy and your hope and your love in the lives of the Schaefer family in the days and weeks to come. They've been strong soldiers through a battle and there's more to come. Yes, we pray for healing. Yes, we pray for understanding. We pray for the skill of the surgeons and the whole surgical team. I lift Heidi, I lift Doug, I lift Grace and Avery and Lauren. The parents, the siblings, and all of us who love in this family, that we might have strength to face what comes, and courage, and know that our everlasting Father has us in His arms. Amen. Amen. Let's also remember Dolores, excuse me, I always want to call her Dolores, Darlene Fromm, Jean's mother. Uh, let's remember Fred and Midmarsh, the Whitehead sisters, uh, Arlene and Dolores. Um, I'm going to ask you to pray fervently for Charles Haywood uh, and Betty, Lloyd and Martha. Continue to hold them in the light. Um, and is there anyone else that I don't know about or am forgetting at this moment that we need to hold up? Continue to pray for the heralds. Kathy's back in Colorado and Dave's back on the road and Shirley's adjusting to her new normal. So... <clears throat> The message today about for you is so important because if we don't get that, then we don't get anything. If we do not understand that and accept that, because it distorts everything else we do, that you are loved with an everlasting love. 
Let's sing together, make me a blessing as we close. Sing it through twice. And make sure you bless somebody on the way out. It's good to see all of you. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful, graceful Christmas. And we'll see most of you tonight for the Christmas Eve service. Let's rise up.